George Peabody was born on February 18, 1795, in the town of South Danvers, Massachusetts. His birthplace was on 205 Washington Street, which is now the house that is the George Peabody Museum. George is the son of Judith and Thomas Peabody and was one of six children. The first ancestors of the Peabody's to come to the Americas resided in Topsfield, Massachusetts, and emigrated from England in 1653. The George Peabody Museum is dedicated to preserving the wonderful life and legacy of George himself. Since George was born into poverty, he was not given the opportunity to receive a formal education. So at the age of 11, George became an apprentice for a general store owner and Captain Proctor. That was just a start to Mr. Peabody's well-known business career. His business career eventually took off in 1814 when George was doing volunteer work for the War of 1812. In 1814, Mr. Peabody met Alicia Riggs, who provided financial backing for a wholesale dry goods firm of Peabody, Riggs & Company. George was a student manager when the firm was created. In 1829, on the verge of Riggs' retirement, the company moved to Baltimore, Maryland, and Peabody became senior partner. As part of George Peabody's job, he made various trips overseas on clipper ships back to his ancestors' homeland of England. And in 1835, while in England, he performed his first of many great public services. George was able to negotiate a loan of $8 million for the state of Maryland, which had been upon bankruptcy at the time. As a result of his generosity, Mr. Peabody received a vote of thanks from the Maryland State Legislature. In 1837, George Peabody went back to the homeland permanently as a result of being incorporated as president of the Eastern Railroad that was built in 1836. While in England, he established the firm of George Peabody and Company, specializing in American securities and foreign exchange. George Peabody became so successful with his business that he became comparable and competed with the banks of Barings and the Rothschilds. To add to his business, George Peabody took Julius Spencer Morgan into partnership, a banker who inherited about $3 million from his family. As George's business prospered and his wealth grew, he realized he had a gift and became unofficial ambassador towards preserving Anglo-American friendship. In 1851, George showed another act of generosity towards his country, because this is when Congress in America were humiliated by not coming up with enough money for a display at the Crystal Palace exhibition. Yet, Mr. Peabody made it possible for America to display their inventions and products besides those of other nations when he donated a gift of $15,000 to Another great act from George was in 1852 when he funded a trip to search for the lost Arctic explorer Sir John Franklin. His donation was $10,000. George also had great motives and did not just throw around money just because he could. For example, the Peabody Donation Fund, which was created in 1862, was George's largest donation of $2,500,000, and 
This association provided housing for the deserving poor in the city of London. Peabody also stressed education because in 1867, at the conclusion of the Civil War, he created the Peabody Education Fund that encouraged intellectual, moral, and industrial education of the impoverished children of the southern states. Peabody would donate another immense $2 million for this organization. George would go on to donate around $8 million in his lifetime, which translates to a number in the billions today. Some other donations he made throughout his life were the Peabody Institute Library, which was created in 1852 and cost $217,000. The Peabody Institute Library of Danvers, which was created in 1856 and cost $100,000. The Peabody Institute at John Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland was built in 1857 and George gave a donation of $1,400,000. The Institute at John Hopkins provides a free library, an endowment for lectures, an academy of music, and an art gallery. The Museum of Archaeology and Ethnology at Harvard University, which was built in 1866. The Peabody Museum of Natural History at Yale University was also built in 1866, and George gave a donation of $150,000. The Peabody Essex Museum, which is located in Salem, Massachusetts, was built in 1867 and George donated a cost of $140,000. And lastly, the Peabody Institute at Georgetown at District of Columbia was also built in 1867 and George donated $15,000. Mr. Peabody was praised after making all of his remarkable contributions. He especially was praised in the cities of Oxford and London. In Oxford around 1867, George was given an honorary degree of DCL, or Doctor of Civil Laws. While in the city of London in 1869, George was given freedom of the city and a statue of him unveiled by the Prince of Wales. Mr. Peabody was also offered a baronetcy of the Grand Cross of the Bath from Queen Victoria. Yet he declined this proposal. The Queen still wanted to commend George, so she sent him an autographed letter of appreciation and a large miniature of herself. After George received a tremendous praise in the year of 1869, he had misfortune within the same year as well, and died in London on November 4th upon a visit to America. A funeral service took place in Westminster Abbey. After the memorial was finished, his body was placed on the HMS Monarch and was escorted by a French and an American naval ship. His body was brought to America where after elaborate ceremonies, he was buried in Danvers on February 8, 1870. George Peabody's life was much different from others of his time. He did not have a wife or any children. He was extremely wealthy, yet donated a good portion of his money away and he was even the cause for the town of South Danvers to change its name to George's last name of Peabody. George Peabody was an unselfish, humble man throughout his life and would always put others before him when it came to money. <laughs>